Welcome back. Okay, so we're talking about the theory of random sampling to say something about a large but unknown population in terms of a random smaller sample of that population. This is useful all over in statistics, and this is kind of an entry point to more advanced uh, topics. So we showed last time that you can have this population, um, which is kind of a large population. Its PDF may or may not even be known, but it has a mean and a, and a variance. And then um, the sample statistics, if I take a subsample, a little n subsample of that big n population, those samples become random variables, and the average of those random variables, x bar, um, is hopefully an estimate of the population mean mu. So the kind of uh, sample mean should be a good estimate of the population mean under some circumstances. And we can also compute things like the sample variance and so on and so forth. So this opens up a ton of questions. Um, all kinds of questions come up. So question one, um, does the expectation of x bar, does x bar equal mu? We, we've kind of hinted that this sample mean should converge uh, to mu in the, as, as little n gets bigger and bigger, as my sample size gets bigger. But can I actually show that the expectation of this random variable is, in fact, the population mean mu? That would be very useful. We're going to do that today. Another question, um, what is the variance of x bar? Meaning, we, we have a, a pretty good gut feeling that this sample mean should be Gaussian distributed for reasonably large n. We know that from the central limit theorem. This should be kind of normally distributed, hopefully with a center around the true mean mu. But what's the variance of that distribution? Is it a fat distribution? Is it skinny? We want the variance of x bar to be really, really small because that means x bar is a really, really tight estimate of mu. So this has implications um, about the convergence of these values with n, how fast is x bar converged to mu, how efficient is it, things like that. There's questions, you know, are, is there a bias? Is, it, is the expectation of x bar mu plus some constant offset? You know, is there any bias in my estimates? Those are all powerful statistics questions. We're going to ask and answer those for this very, very simple case of simple random sampling to infer things about a population. But these questions hold much more generally in statistics, in data analysis, and even in machine learning. Okay, does my, you know, if I sample data, do I converge to a good model of a much bigger complex process? Okay. Good, so we're gonna jump in uh, and we're gonna start with the expectation value because that's always easier to work with than the variance because the formula is simpler than the formula for variance. So we want to show that um, the expectation value of x bar equals mu, meaning that x bar is an unbiased estimate of mu. So we say that x bar is an unbiased estimate of mu. This is statistics language for the expectation value of x bar equals mu, and there's no constant error. So the x, x bar is unbiased, meaning it, it converges, its expectation value is exactly mu. Okay, so we're going to prove this now. This is pretty easy to prove. Uh, maybe I will do this in green. So the expectation of x bar um, is literally, I'm just gonna plug this in to the expectation. This is equal to the expectation of one over n, sum i equals one to n of each of my random variables, xi. Now we know that we can pop this constant out and this, the expectation of a sum is the sum of expectations. So this equals one over n, sum i equals one to n, um, expectation, of each of these x i's. Here's a really important fact that I need you to, to believe and to know, and I'm just going to write it down here. The for any uh, for any individual x for any individual uh, indiv individual 
sample xi. The expected value of xi is equal to mu. Uh, and the variance of xi is equal to sigma squared, where mu is the true population mean and sigma squared is the true population variance. This is super important. Any one of these individual samples, its expected value is mean mu and its expected variance is sigma squared, where those are the population values. You can actually convince yourself of this pretty easily. You can write down this expectation value. Um, this I'll just do it for, for the expected value and you can convince yourself also for the variance. Um, this is the sum over every single possible n, over all of the big N, uh, j equals one, of all of the little values xj times the probability that my random variable xi equals little xj. That's just the definition of expected value of this random variable. It's the sum over all the possible things it could be times the probability that it is actually that thing. And there are each of these, um, the, the, the chance that I drew any one of these for xi is just one over n. That's the probability. So this equals the sum over uh, big N of little xj times the probability of one over big N. This is the definition of my population mean. It's one over n times the sum of all of those little xi's. So you can convince yourself anyway that each of these random variables, each of these xi's, their expected value is mu and their expected variance, their variance is sigma squared. You can think about it because each of these x's is pulled from this population. So you can kind of say that uh, xi is distributed according to whatever the distribution of my population was. Okay, whatever my population distribution is, each of these xi's is randomly sampled from that population distribution. So anyway, this, let's go back to, to what we're trying to show. We're trying to show that the expectation of x bar equals mu. So we take our sample mean x bar, we plug it into this expectation, and it's the sum of um, all of these little, the, the, these uh, random variables xi times one over little n, the constant pops out, the sum of an expect, the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations. And now each of these expectation values is mu. So I have um, essentially this equals uh, one over n times the sum of i equals one to little n of mu. Each of these is equal to mu. This is n times mu times one over n. This whole thing just equals mu. The expected value of x bar is equal to mu. Very, very cool. This means that x bar, the sample mean, is an unbiased estimate uh, of the population mean mu. And hopefully as n gets bigger and bigger, this expected value, um, sorry, the, 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 this distribution of x bar gets tighter and tighter and tighter around this expected value. Good. Um, maybe I'll just draw a little picture. So, um, probably I have some population distribution and I'm actually gonna draw it to be kind of gnarly. Um, but let's say it has some mean value, some mu. The sample mean X bar by the central limit theorem, we'll prove this later, but by the central limit theorem, X bar is going to be a normally distributed variable about its expected value of mu. So, x bar should be normally distributed with its expectation value centered around mu. And we want x bar to get tighter and tighter and tighter. We want the spread of possible x bars to be really, really small around this value of mu as n gets larger. That spread, of course, is related to the variance of this, uh, of this x bar quantity. So now let's talk about what's the variance of x bar, okay? Variance of x bar tells me how good this estimate is for um, increasing sample size little n, okay? Good, um, this result makes intuitive sense. Now let's talk about the variance uh, of x bar. So I'm going to actually prove a 
slight approximation. What I'm going to write down is not the exact variance of x-bar. It's an approximation to the variance of x-bar, making an assumption that each of these x's is independent. Now, remember, we sampled without replacement. So every time I drew a sample, my population got a little smaller. That technically builds in a small amount of dependence between these variables, but for really, really big n, for really, really big populations, you can kind of assume that these are independent. And that's what I'm going to write down here, and then I'm going to write down the correction for finite n, for finite population size. So this is an approximation. Uh, this equals, again, I'm going to plug in this expression into x-bar. This equals the variance of the sum, var, of 1 over n times x1 plus dot 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 plus x little n. And I'm just going to, again, remind you, this is, um, this is if, if these are independent samples, then I can say this. This is, um, Actually, sorry, if they're independent samples, then I can split these into the sum of a bunch of variances. So I'll, wa I'll, I'll, I'll wait to write down my independence assumption in a minute. Um, so my 1 over n pops out as a 1 over n squared. That's how variance of a constant times a variable, you can pop that constant squared out. So this equals 1 over n squared times the variance of this sum. And that is the sum of the individual variances. That is var x1 plus dot 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 plus var xn. Now I've used this assumption. This is true if my xi's are independent. And that's true for very, very large population size and much, much greater than one, like n a million or 100,000 or 10,000. This is going to be a very good approximation. Technically, there is joint covariance between these variables. And so this step is actually not exactly true. It's really kind of, this is approximately equal to this for very large population size. So be on the watch for me making those kinds of approximations. Again, we're trying to compute the variance of our sample mean. We want that variance to be small. It's equal now approximately to 1 over n squared times the sum of the variances of all of those individual elements. And the sum of those variances, each of those variances, are the population variance, sigma squared. So I can write this now as, you know, each of these, this is just, um, let's say, uh, this is n times sigma squared. And so this whole thing is approximately equal to n over n squared times sigma squared. So it's sigma squared over n. And actually, this is the result from the central limit theorem. So I want you to, to go back and, and check out that central limit theorem uh, video. This is the result from the central limit theorem. Um, that, that if you have the sum of a bunch of independent random variables, each with their own variance sigma squared, then the sum of those variables would have um, this uh, variance. Okay, So this is actually all coming from the central limit theorem. This is, um, I guess, law of large numbers. This is central limit theorem. Good. Now, I'll show this in the next video. I'll actually go through the gory details of deriving this in the next video. But remember, this is only true for very, very large n, very large population. So for finite uh, population size big N, technically this var x bar, there is a correction. And again, I'm going to derive this in the next lecture. There's a correction. It's sigma squared over n times 1 minus little n minus 1 over big N minus 1. Okay, and again, this is approximately equal to sigma squared over little n when uh, little n is much less than big N. When I have a really big population um, and my sample size is small compared to that really big population, 
then I recover this, this very, very good approximation to the variance of X bar. So for small populations and small samples, you need this, this finite size correction. Most of the time, we're gonna end up using this result from the central limit theorem. We're going to assume that our sample mean X bar is a normally distributed random variable with mean mu and variance sigma squared over N where sigma squared and mu are the variance and mean of our overall population. So this X bar tells us a lot about this unknown population. Um, so measuring this X bar, measuring all of this sample, taking this random sample and computing this X bar, the sample mean, tells me a ton about the population. And as N gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this variance gets smaller and smaller and smaller, meaning we converge uh, to the true population mean with a relatively small sample n. Okay, super cool stuff. In the next lecture, this is going to be a technical lecture, I'm actually going to derive this finite n correction uh, to the variance of x bar. It's pretty technical, you can probably skip it if you like, but if you want to know where it comes from, um, I'll actually write this out in terms of the covariances um, for the shrinking without replacement population. Okay, thank you.